many projects lose sight of the expertise, talent, the passion that their own community can have on the project itself. We've also got a great advisory group, which includes Benny Assember, Garland Wan, Kenzie, Ben Lakoff, Ken Chatterbaity, all just big heavyweights in the space, in my opinion. Hey guys, this is Alex from Gaines. Today I'm with Dylan from Kylin Network. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good, good. All right, let's just jump right into it. What are you guys doing sure. at Kylin? We're basically a data blockchain. What that means is we're a blockchain oriented toward data operationalization and monetization. The internet is sort of like deeply wounded in the sense that its biggest business model is advertising. And we also have the sensibility that the internet and humanity are kind of like one and the same. The internet is just an expression of humanity. So I think humanity can be so much more than the actualization of that being like an advertising business model. So when we talk about a data blockchain, what we're talking about is trying to find ways to operationalize the many different ways that data can be useful to our lives. And through that operationalization, there are obviously resource benefits, right? Of varying degrees, making things perhaps more efficient. Can you feed data to machine learning more efficiently? Can you start to think about personal capitalization avenues and routes and paths, like for example, tokenizing your genome, which is a business model that exists today, but it's just centralized and nobody knows that when you send your you know, genomic information in 23andMe, on the back end, they're selling that to researchers for a lot of money. So why couldn't you get that individual benefit yourself? Similarly, you know, we see with other uh, projects, for example, Brave, basic attention token, how can we monetize, you know, even that, just that advertising model. So where Kylan comes into the picture to try to help solve that problem is from this idea of validating data. Because if we're gonna automate all these different functions in a decentralized way through smart contracts, whether we're talking about DeFi or whether we're talking about updating an app, a flight insurance app that you know you end up getting like automatic settlement of flight insurance when a flight shows up late, that information has to be really sound. We have to have a good sense that that information is, is sound, it's accurate, it's timely, all those things. How do we do that? Well, with Kylan, the way that we do that, where we approach this problem is we put some value into it. And that's the beauty of blockchains. You can put value into, into functions, right? And that, that zip around all, all between people on the internet, we'll say, um, rather than just being a neutral thing of just sharing information, blockchain allowed us to have value behind some, this information. So it's a value transfer layer. Blockchain is nothing more than a value transfer layer. And when I speak at the beginning about the internet being wounded, we heal this wound because the internet should encapsulate value transfer and not just, you can just copy information, distribute it. It's good in some ways, but it leads to a lot of problems in other ways when it comes to value transfer. So what we do is we stake some KYL, uh, which is our native token to whatever the information that's being called uh, is through an API. And hopefully that gives uh, some gamified incentive or incentivization framework such that you have a good sense that the information being reported is true. Because if it's not, then whoever is staking that information, we'll say our data, um, can get slashed, right? They can lose some of their KYL and nobody wants that. So from extremely high level, um, trying to solve the large problem of internet data sharing through blockchain gamification and staking. Okay, so let's say I'm just a regular crypto user and I've bought some KYL tokens because I believe in the project, but I'd like to do more. I'd like to share my data and I don't have my genome sequenced yet. Is there some other kind of data I could share and then stake my tokens and then earn some? So my sensibility is that what we need to do is we need to incubate and accelerate the various use cases that will drive ways of sharing information. So for example, if you were talking about like tokenizing your, or, you know, uploading your genomic information and something like that, we've introduced this uh, vehicle called DDMOs, which is essentially, it's just um, a way to accelerate all these use cases. So anybody can buy into a future 
uh, data market. A DDMO stands for Decentralized Data Market Offering. The first ones will be coming out in the next couple of months. And that comes straight from the community. So the community says, well, I think this is a great idea. The Kylan community you know, takes a vote on it, says this is an interesting proposal. Then a whole bunch of liquidity goes into Balancer. It's contained within a fractionalized NFT. And then that is used to accelerate whatever the use case is. And they get query fees from um, the future, all future query fees as a fraction of the NFT they own for that data market. So if we're talking about, you know, whether it's on-chain analytics as a data market or genome, you know, like a tokenized genome data market, they'll get all the query fees from that data market. So the answer is, is how does a, a person get involved? The best way to get involved would be to catalyze the adoption through uh, speculating on what a great use case would be, and then accelerating that through putting some value into whatever that DDM is. And that DDM itself is not just a decentralized data market, but it's also basically like a startup too. I think we'll see all of this stuff seeded over the next uh, year. And, you know, we're getting operational. We're working with all of our partners who require API calls. So we're working with all of them to say, you know, what are the customized solutions you need? I think within a year, we'll start seeing interesting stories about people having some sort of personal capitalization on the data they share, whether that's share genome or whether that's sharing wallet info to start getting ideas about uh, credit risk or, or credit credit info. I think that that's a huge use case or whether that's opting in to you know, share some sort of like enterprise partnership. You know, let's say everything goes really well and we have some partnership with Amazon or something like that. And you opt in and you say, well, we'll monetize that information for you, get a kickback on it. That could be interesting too. There's all sorts of like interesting ways we can think about monetizing and operationalizing D data from an individual perspective. Gosh, gotcha, yeah, it, it does seem like there's a lot of potential, but we're still a bit far away from it. What are you guys working on right now at the moment? Through the efforts of our CTO, Sam, who's you know, quickly become, I think, an innovative and visionary leader in the Polkadot space in general, not just for Kylan. We've innovated XCMP palette calling, which means you can call any function of any other parachain. Kylan like Sam basically did that. I think that that's got really large implications um, because it means we can call any function, any other parathread or parachain, which opens us up to a lot of possibilities or, and they can call ours. The other thing that we're working on in the near term from a technical standpoint is API. So our API is getting developed right now and we're working with uh, several, I guess we'll call it blue chip or larger Polkadot ecosystem partners, you know, on the level of, you know, top, we'll call them the top five to integrate directly with Kylan and we're customizing APIs for them. Yeah, that's really the next thing. And then parachains are coming along. Um, we'll do our auction. Those are sort of the near term things. And then obviously I already spoke to the DDMO or DDM initiative that's getting started over the next month or two. I think that that's going to be really neat. Can you please tell us about yourself, your crypto story and your team as well? The experience you guys have, your credentials, because we're just hearing you talk about that you want to revolutionize the data markets. It's like maybe a trillion dollar market competing with Ocean Protocol and other guys. And people can wonder who the hell is this guy to say all that. So uh, please go ahead. The vision for Kylan was always to enable people outside of the team to become more prosperous than anybody within the team. And I, what I mean by that is, and truly is like our, our DAO and orientation. I've been in several projects prior to this, and obviously the startup model, there's some merit to it in the sense that you need to have some direction, you need to have a centralized team, you need to have somebody who's able to make decisions, otherwise you kind of get mired in just a space where no decisions can be made because there's no authority. So hierarchies have, to some extent, you know, a point, but at the same time, I think that many projects lose sight of the expertise, talent, the passion that their own community can have on the project itself, even from a team level. So what we've endeavored to do is work on this idea of DAO in practice, where we've basically taken community members into the core team over time. And our governance model is set up such that over five years, 
we moved completely to a DAO orientation where token holders have complete governance over KYL. And I think that that's a worthy vision. I think it's also efficient because it means that you're casting a really wide net. You're giving responsibility to community holders. And it means that the expertise isn't just like, I don't need to know everything. I just need to know that I need to be good at where to place trust in members in the early days, at least where I am part of that hierarchy, where it's in good hands, right. For them to guide it further. But in terms of my own background, I've been in this space. I've, I've been aware of Bitcoin since late 2010. So by most accounts, a pretty early adopter, I guess I've been obsessed with blockchain for a long time, met the Ethereum community pretty early on here in Toronto and was part of their ICO, did my own projects, uh, advised several. I uh, did a lot of horrible angel investing. I've done traditional startups in the past. Quite frankly, I failed a lot. That's what qualifies me, which may sound provocative or counterintuitive, but it made me really, really hungry to prove myself out in this space. And when the opportunity came along to try to work on a really interesting big problem, which is data, I just went for it and tried to attract really great people around, around the core team and around myself to help see this vision implemented. We've also got great advisory group, which includes Benny Assembert, Garland Wan, Kenzie, Ben Lakoff, Ken Chatterbaity, all just big heavyweights in the space, in my opinion. And then the development team, obviously I already mentioned Sam, who's CTO. He's, I, I think it goes without saying, his talents. And in fact, as part of our DAO in practice, I'm going to be giving him more authority over time. And so he's actually going to be leading, uh, I think, more, more so than I am. Um, because I think that the future of Kylan belongs to developers. I get the sensibility of like, who the hell are you? But I, my answer is that like, I'm everybody. I'm everybody that's behind the project. Like it's not just me. I was just somebody who decided that we were going to like go for it. We all worked really hard to try to popularize. I'd like to get your insights on crypto more generally. What you think of crypto in general, what you think of all these institutions coming in, the banks, first of all, a few years back, you know, saying crypto is a scam and now offering crypto to their clients. Where do you think crypto is going? We see China banning crypto once again for the third or fourth time, all that. What are your thoughts? Just speak about crypto uh, from your 10 years of experience. My feelings about in general, like the world and regulation and all this stuff and China bans and traditional corporations and entities you know, it's kind of like shadily getting into it, but not getting into it. I mean, the truth is that all of these elite institutions and the people that comprise them, I would say 95% of them may publicly say, nah, I'm not into blockchain or, or their position is neutral or whatever it is. It, they're, they're buying, like they're buying crypto or they're taking some position in crypto. They're all doing it, whether we're talking about Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, every single one, because they're just like us. They're adroit in their fields. They're intelligent, critical thinkers typically, right? And they all are making the same conclusions. There's two faces to all of this. And, you know, there's one that's presented and there's one that's behind closed doors. This is my opinion based on some evidence. All right. Well, thanks a yeah. lot, Dylan, for taking the time to coming in. Happy to speak again in six months or a year, uh, hopefully with some genomics or like a, an Amazon partnership or whatever you guys have and use case for the data. You guys drop a like, write a comment, share the video around, and uh, I'll see you again for more awesome interviews. Thank you, Dylan. Totally. Thank you. Really appreciate you giving us the platform to, to speak, Alex, and I uh, hope we talk again soon. Yep. Cheers. See you.